The fourth type of organic reaction we're going to talk about is called esterification. And as the name suggests, this involves making an ester from an alcohol, which we know uh, consists of a carboxyl OH group, and an organic acid. And when you think acid, you th should think H+. Now, combine those two things, and you guessed it, <clears throat> we've got water. Esterification involves combining an uh, alcohol and an organic acid. The products are always an ester and water. You need to be able to identify this type of reaction when you're given the chemical equation as you are in the example here. How do you do that? Well, you look, you box that functional group, and I see one of my reactants <clears throat> is an organic acid. I see my Ku group. One of my reactants is an alcohol. That tells me right away. Organic acid plus alcohol involves dehydration synthesis. I'm going to get myself an ester and water. How does that look? Will you be given the structural formulas? Absolutely. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to be asked to draw this. Predicting the products? Definitely. <clears throat> and it's not quite as overwhelming as it might seem. Take a look and I'll try to make it as clear as I can. Uh, the first of the reactants we see drawn below is the organic acid. And the organic acid, the operative piece uh, that we want to focus on, the focal point of the acid is this H. The H is really technically an H+, plus, or it's going to be. All those oxygens pull the electrons away from hydrogen, making it an acidic hydrogen. That's the difference between um, the COOH and just the OH. So we've got the hydrogen, the acidic hydrogen on organic acid. We've got the OH uh, hydroxyl group from the alcohol. What happens is these two are going to end up getting together. They're going to join together and form water. That's one product. And this guy here, if we spun it around and moved it over, is going to attach where that hydrogen vacated. And there's your ester. So the hydrogen and the hydroxyl, the acidic hydrogen and the hydroxyl, have a, a really high tendency to interact with one another to make water when they're around each other. And when they do, they vacate bonding sites. So those uh, leftover uh, electrons that need to be owned, shared, <clears throat> that are uh, still residing on that oxygen and this carbon in the hydrocarbon, well, now they, uh, they have destinations for sharing. We form that new bond, and now we have, instead of the carboxyl on the end of an organic compound, we have the carboxyl interior at a secondary position. Our functional group now shows that we have an ester. And we can see that on the other side. If I put these all back where they go, here are your products. We box the functional group. There's your ester and the other product, as we mentioned, being water. Again, this is a form of what we call dehydration synthesis. Technically, you could also call it condensation polymerization. Hopefully, both those terms uh, send up a red flag. You're dealing with water. Dehydration, condensation. Both involve the removal of water. Uh, our fifth chemical reaction is called saponification. And my trick for this one it might be a stretch, but I'm going to stick with it. It's the letters S-O-A-P, which spell soap when you rearrange them. Saponification is the process of making soap. This involves an ester, like what we made in our previous reaction. Um, basically a fat. Fats and oils, these esters. Big, uh, the esters, a lot of times, they involve uh, glycerides, which, I mean, other than spotting it in the name down here, when you see triglyceride in a big honking molecule like this, <clears throat> boys and girls, don't worry, you're never going to have to draw this one. You just need to be, be able to identify. I have got a very large molecule, hydrocarbon chain with 14 repeating subunits. Uh, this 
glycerol attached to it. And so what you know from the get-go, you're not going to have to draw that. Not ever, ever. And what we get is you're going to take this large hunk and fat or oil, this ester, you're going to react it with a very strong base, something inorganic. And you're going to form alcohol and soap. And soap is the product we are concerned with here. Sodium palmitate, you see, uh, on the bottom, the name of this particular soap. So you form glycerol and alcohol in this case. And so we do this with the AP kids. React a bunch of different fats and oils together with lye, sodium hydroxide. It's the same base used here. Uh, and the product is soap and glycerol. And the neat thing about soap, what makes it so special and such a great cleaning product, is that it maintains some of the basic properties. This NaOH, some of that is left over. Uh, soap is slightly basic. Because of that, bacteria don't thrive at all. That's what makes soap sort of an antiseptic antibiotic, gives it its antibiotic properties. By making it a basic environment, um, you're cleaning in a way that those hand sanitizers can't possibly match. Saponification, again, this is uh, an organic reaction you need to be able to recognize. You see a molecule you couldn't draw until you had a year of college organic chemistry under your belt. Well, you've probably got a saponification reaction. So you're looking for something, a name like, again, triglyceride. There's a big ester, something with a structural formula here that you really would have a hard time identifying. And then really the one that should tip you off, as you see we're using something, an inorganic reactant like sodium hydroxide. Look for a strong base. Lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. That's what should tip you off, that you have a saponification reaction. Ester plus base gives you an alcohol and soap.